from the CTV News Channel. Thanks for joining us. I'm Akshay Tandon. More than one million bottles of children's medication will arrive in Canada next week to address the ongoing shortage that has been plaguing parents across the country. The federal government has procured a supply of children's pain medication from foreign sources. The supply will be given to hospitals, community pharmacies and retailers and they'll be appearing on shelves by early next week. Joining me now is Justin Bates, CEO Ontario Pharmacists Association. Justin, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on on this uh, important topic. Yeah, your thoughts on the announcement that came in earlier today. This will come as a relief to all parents across the country. It certainly will, but I want to emphasize that this is a short-term solution. We really need to better understand the root causes that is leading to these drug shortages, um, especially when it affects our children uh, and such an essential and broad-ranging number of medications, including children's acetaminophen and ibuprofen. Uh, we need better and more domestic capacity in order to have more flexibility in our supply chain. Elaborate a little more. You did say this is a short-term uh, uh, you know, solution to the problem. Long-term, we have to see more being done within the country. Absolutely. We need to ensure that we have more capacity. The number of suppliers right now for these products is quite uh, small. And part of that's because they're sourcing a lot of the uh, production and active product ingredients from foreign countries. So our dependency on other countries to supply our market is quite significant. And if we want to be able to have a stable uh, supply chain without the vulnerabilities that we've seen over the last couple of years, we need to make those investments so that we're manufacturing these products in Canada and that we can deal with the fluctuations of demand because we've seen 300% increase in demand for these products. And that's largely due to the fact that we have so many more illnesses uh, in the community, whether it's the RSVs or looking things like cold and flu. 300% increase in the demand. Wow. Okay, Justin, let's also uh, discuss in terms of packaging, labeling. That's something that was discussed uh, uh, in today's press conference as well. What should parents be watching out for when they go to pharmacies? Well, the good news is that uh, these products will have either an insert or a sticker. Um, and there's really three areas that are uh, addressed with the labeling requirements from a regulatory perspective. The first is the bilingual uh, component to make sure it has English and French. The second is the drug facts and what is displayed is slightly different um, requirements from the US and other jurisdictions. And third, there is a, a difference in the concentration of some of these products and the liquid formulation. And the dosing instructions are different from particularly the US to Canada. So this will make sure that the parents understand exactly how much to give their child an appropriate dose. Uh, and uh, that it will be safe. You know, I want to go back to what you said just in your previous answer about the demand, 300% higher demand than usual for these medications. And we're talking about a million plus bottles, uh, Justin, that will be available. Uh, will that be enough? I don't think it will be. Uh, I do think we need to put in mitigating uh, steps in order to ration the supply. If we just put it out over the counter, as is typically seen on the shelves, uh, I do believe that part of the 300% was due to panic buying uh, and hoarding in the August to September timeframe. And I would suspect that we'd see something similar in terms of consumption patterns and people buying more than they need. So one of the steps we can take in pharmacies is to place those products behind the counter. And that means that the patient will have to speak to the pharmacist and we can limit the, uh, the sale to one per person. And how will that be implemented? Well, it's not a mandatory requirement since these are deemed as over-the-counter medications. Uh, so it will be on an individual pharmacy basis to make their judgments. We are, as an association, encouraging and recommending it. Uh, and we think that will help uh, make sure that everybody needs it, can get it. Um, but also, you know, I think it's really important that um, we get more of this supply from other countries and we continue to have the domestic manufacturers ramp up production because they're at about 35% more than they have ever produced. And they look at it from the perspective of historical consumption rates. And we've just never seen anything like this. I mean, our, right. our cold and flu season started earlier. Respiratory illnesses started in late summer, which would typically not happen until the fall. And all of this has created a perfect storm for demand. Yeah, like doctors put it, uh, calling it a triple threat that we are dealing with at the moment. Justin Bates, CEO, Ontario Pharmacists Association. Appreciate your time and your insight, Justin. Thank you.
Thank you.